In this video, I'm working on the upper control arm design and the bump stop design for the Ultra 4. I'm starting with this piggyback bump stop from King. It's a really cool product that they came out with recently. I haven't seen it on too many cars, but I've seen it on a few. And it's a really cool design because it's basically like a piggyback bypass shock in the form of a bump stop and it's a three inch diameter with a i think it's a nine inch stroke so it's a really cool design so what i need to figure out is where this bump stop is going to interface with the lower control arm i think what i'm probably going to end up doing is a slapper arm where the bottom part of the bump stop is a, is attached to its own little arm that interfaces with the lower control arm. I've seen a design like that from Camberg Racing on some of their Raptor long travel kits and from Morgan Clark Design. He has these really cool, he calls them slapper arms. That's going to come in a later video. But for now, what I'm doing is I'm building the assembly so that I can cycle this shock. I'm using a new type of mate here that I've never used before. It's called a limit mate. So it basically constrains the movement of a part within an assembly with a maximum and minimum distance between two reference points. So it's perfect for shocks because it allows the piston of the shock to cycle through the cylinder of the shock within a limit. So again, following best practices here, you want the, at full compression, you want the axis of the shock to be perpendicular to the plane of the lower control arm. So setting up that angle here, maximum compression, I need this shock to be 25 degrees in relation to that plane. So basically, I'm just checking to see how much room I have on the front part of this lower control arm and adding the spherical bearing mate to attach the top part of the bump stop to. Typically, these bump stops are mounted inside of a chromoly tube, and then they just bounce off of the top of the knuckle. But since we're doing the tall knuckle design on this, it doesn't really make sense to put it way up there because it'd be above the driver's head. So I'm going to have it bounce off of the lower control arm somewhere where there's lots of room. But what I come to realize during this design process is that I have a lot of interferences on the lower control arm and I need to redesign it. You can see here that the tall knuckle interferes with the shocks. So I started by just switching the location of the coil carrier and the piggyback bypass shock because that'll give me a little bit more room. But what I end up realizing is that the tire itself is going to crash into the bulk of the meat of the lower control arm. So rather than having this asymmetric design, I need to make it symmetrical around that plane defined by the axle. And I need to reduce the steering angle. So the goal for the steering angle was plus or minus 30 degrees. I think plus or minus 25 is more realistic for this. And I think that's plenty. 